Hmm. All right, welcome back. It's time for us to get into some other conversations this morning. Now, the hashtag is Breakfast Daily on all social media platforms. The WhatsApp line is 0550-585832. There'll be different conversations that we'll be having today. And at any point in time you want to interact with us, kindly feel free to send us a message. Now, we're going to be looking at recent developments in the uh, mining industry, the developments in the mining sector. Now, our colleague Kojo Ajiman has a report for us. Let's take a look at some new developments that are happening. We're getting some. Muddy and very polluted is the nature of water bodies in Wamase, a community in the Akrofum district of the Ashanti region. The destruction of farmlands is on the rise and these pieces of land are part of the many telltale signs of illegal mining which is on the ascendancy. Most road networks in the district have been ravaged by illegal mining and along the route you see what is left of the landscape. This is how some of the miners welcomed our team. You have seen the roads and how bad the water bodies in Wamasi are, but residents are dealing with a much bigger problem of uncovered illegal mining pits. Secondary <laughs> The effects of illegal mining are no different at Amancia Central, Amancia West, and Amancia South districts. Apart from the bad nature of roads, water bodies have been heavily polluted by illegal mining activities. Farmlands in these areas have also not been spared, and the situation is of grave concern to the president's representatives here. Illegal mining. I would say it is a very a Herculean tax to fight. We are doing our best. Even last, yes, yesterday, I, I sent out my, my a illegal mining committee. They, we have a committee that fights against illegal mining. They went around and they were able to pick up some three uh, uh, control boards from some excavators. So we are doing our best. but. I would say they are very difficult. They are difficult. They are, they are, they are what makes difficult. them so difficult to fight? What makes them so difficult? Maybe you go what, what, after what? them, the government goes after them, the police goes after them, but they still do. What, what's making it so difficult? I would say their job is like somebody who is doing an, 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 an arm robbery. The goal there is for Guyanians, and it has been arrested in, uh, in the bosom of the, of the president to take care for all Guyanians. And anybody who is going, who is going to that is like somebody going to robbery. So people are going into robbery. We are fighting them, but still they are still going into it. That is what illegal money is. It takes it is a source of a uh, livelihood. But we are still doing our best to keep down the illegal mining in the district. Illegal mining is seriously affecting us here uh, in uh, so many ways, and coupled with uh, truancy and all of that. So the assembly is devising a measure. Uh, to you know, deal with the illegal miners. When you talk of our water resources, the, the water pollution is there. When you talk about the, our, our forests, you know, they are also being depleted. Uh, when you talk about the, all the muddy areas, you know, or the marshy areas, they, it, it's affected. Many students, many of uh, 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 people of you know school going age, because of the illegal mining, they go there, they get few monies here and there. So they have taken it upon themselves not to embrace the education. But after all, what they say is, after all, what am I going to school for? I'm going to school just to get money, to get work and then what, get money. So they have capitalized on the situation to, you know, uh, 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 make hay out of this. And for me, it's very bad. So we are devising a strategy. And the strategy is that 
All right. So that was a report by our colleague Kojo Ajiman looking at the situation with small scale mining, illegal small scale mining in parts of the Ashanti region. Well, we're privileged to be joined this morning by the Honorable Deputy Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, George Mirku Duka. Good morning, Honorable. Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast Daily. A uh, pleasure. It's a pleasure, pleasure to have you on set. We you know look, you're you look nice. It's nice yes. to have you here too. Yes. <laughs> I am making us feel Thanks. like big people. Grateful. Yeah. Grateful. <laughs> <laughs> very, very nice. So, okay. so uh, just give us a quick summary um, of where we are in mm. terms of the uh, fight against illegal mining. Yeah, let me say good morning to your cherished viewers and commend you for the work you've been doing. Uh, I've Thank been watching you, you closely. Um, you know, when we started, um, uh, fortunately, His Excellency the President uh, gave us the authority to manage the mining, especially. Um, the sector minister himself, Honorable Samuel Abujinapo, organized a kind of uh, a national um, dialogue for us to, and bipartisan national dialogue, obviously, for us to decide on how we can fight this kanka. Mm. So we had national one here in Accra, had another one in Kumasi, another one in northern belt of the country. Uh, the Kumasi one was led by Otunfo himself. Uh, in the northern was led by the overlord of Dagbo. Okay. Uh, the idea was to uh, find ways and means of fighting this kanka, the Galapse. Mm -hmm. Obviously you've been following closely in the Galapse menace. <coughs> So um, just after the dialogue, we came together uh, to say, yes, uh, what's the way forward? One, we had uh, one kind of uh, method. The method was to have a system where globally we've agreed to the, uh, the mercury reduction use mm -hmm. and that we call the Minamata Convention, mm -hmm. where we want to commit to. Uh, and the Minamata Convention seeks to reduce the use of mercury. No mercury is poisonous, mm -hmm. yeah. and people process gold without, uh, you know, with the use of mercury and cyanide. And you cannot just say that you are reducing without also sensitizing and educating people. Okay. So we said yes. Let's educate people too. Let's also find ways of applying technology. Mm. So we then uh, introduced this mercury-free machines mm. that we've been supplying to uh, small-scale miners. Okay. Uh, recently, uh, we just uh, brought in about 100 that will be distributed to small-scale miners. Uh, secondly, another method that will be used is also to commission the Operation Halt 2. The Operation Halt 2 also seeks to kind of clamp down mm. cassettrants that are mining in our river bodies and that uh, has also been going down well. And we may not be able to fight this battle without consensus, without collective effort of Ghanaians. It's not like Mirko Duka do a let's see. Mm. It's about me and you. It's about you educating Ghanaians each and every morning that yes, let's move out of our river bodies. Let's move out of our forest uh, belt. It's very important and okay, key to us. Know. Mm -hmm. For Operation Halt, for instance, which there was a big push. We all heard about it. We know there was a task force. We know the regional security councils were leading the efforts in their various um, places of jurisdiction. Are you saying that that kind of consultation or that kind of sensitization wasn't done prior to embarking on Operation Halt? Because we know that the minister, yourself, were really on the ground trying to communicate with traditional leaders, with people in the communities, just to get that kind of response to combat the illegal mining that was going on. We still see brown rivers. We still see land that has been destroyed, farmlands that have been destroyed by mining. We still see pits that have been left uncovered. Are you saying you didn't engage the public before the big push for Operation you've, you've even answered the question that you're asking. How have I answered That you saw bit? us on the ground educating people. So that, that alone should tell you that we have been educating people. Uh, we have been conscientizing people. The stress has been people complying and stakeholders nananum every each and every community member in each community must be part of this process and that is why i'm here this morning telling Ghanaians that we must come together as Ghanaians to fight this battle we mustn't leave it for just the leadership to do it because like operation hall 2 that you mentioned yes they come around 
they leave, they go back. But the idea, what we have even uh, decided and what we are doing uh, is to get some speedboats that we've procured to be put on the river bodies, have river wardings that will be permanently placed mm. on those uh, river banks. They will be patrolling along the river banks, make sure uh, we also have some people at vantage points where they will be reporting to. Then uh, the operation hall to may zoom in intermittently. And that, if that measure is you know, rolled out, we believe it will reduce it drastically. Do you believe the gung-ho approach for burning excavators and other equipment was the wrong approach? There was a lot of criticism when the, the method that was employed, you know, were burning people's equipment for... A lot of people thought that was the wrong tactic. Mm. Now, you know, two years I down the line... I thought we were even going to stop there. You, you asked a very fantastic... No, no, no. Well, that two was years down the approach. line, it looks like we're back to square one. No, you see... So has it been a success or a failure? I am, I am for it. The burning of excavators. Why? Why? Fantastic. You know, when you get to the field, you realize that some of the river courses are diverted. Mm -hmm. mm. They divert the river course, they get the uh, river course bare, then they put the excavator on to mine on the dry bed. Then when the operation hall to get the air, they remove what they call the control board, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is very portable to handle, mm -hmm. and they leave it. Obviously, excavator is not something handy right. that you can take along or something. So the, the soldiers leave, they come back at night yeah. to then, you know, activate it to, to use it. Right. So it becomes very difficult for, for the operation hall to, to handle such a situation. What do you do? You decommission it mm. because you wouldn't want them to come back and use it. So it, then you have no option then. But somebody will also suggest, as you, you, you were trying to do, can't we use it elsewhere? to possibly support equipment that we use to construct roads. And if we don't take it one day, through technology, we'll come here. Uh, somebody may even construct a building along the road. We <laughs> said, okay, we can use it for hospital. Why are you pulling it down? <laughs> Obviously, that building Apples could, and oranges. Uh, yeah. But, okay. Uh, you, you may see, no, it, uh, uh, maybe. see it like that. But I don't see it that way because water is life. And if care is not th taking, we may import water into this country going forward. So it's equally important to protect our river bodies for our future. Agreed. And we shouldn't in any way underrate any measure. And these are not people who take things for granted. And if these machines are not bent sometimes, those that could be tracked, they, they track them to the near, any nearby police station. Those that may not be able because they remove control board and also have the idea of coming back to mine they get them bent not all of them are bent anyway all right so right now where we find ourselves will we ever win this fight yes um now we have instituted district mining committees the district mining committees are to uh, supervise the activities of small scale mining in each mining district that one is done. Uh, what we've also uh, done is to retool the inspector division of the various uh, mining officers of the Minerals Commission because we believe if you do regular inspection of the various uh, activities that go on in the various uh, district, it will in a way uh, kind of also uh, sensitize them to calm down the pressure of mining responsibly. So uh, we retooling recently, the minister donated about 100 pickups just to an other equipment, mining equipment, that will facilitate their, you know, supervisory role in the various uh, districts. And that, that, in a way, has gone uh, down well with them. But if a whole military um, and other, you know, um, entourage goes down on the ground and is really, after a year to being in the field and everything else, our water bodies are still the same. What shows that the new direction you're going is going to 
give us any success. Yes, yeah, so um, the idea that you're showing now or you're giving out now is why you've been burning excavators. So we, we believe we need to deepen uh, community sensitization, we need to deepen community engagement, we need to uh, think largely of how we regularize the mm. whole uh, sector, not to kind of uh, do it uh, in a drastic kind of ways. Mm. So we combining the two, uh, how do we continuously, you know, visit them tell them the need for them to move out of the river body so even that we have also launched what we call the alternative livelihood uh, program where we move them out of the river bodies you bring them to create an equally kind of uh, arrangement for them because uh, we've realized that you move them out of the river bodies or forest and you give them sewing machines they don't really appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, because gold it's, and so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But speaking of gold, Honorable, so, the, the end product of all of this and the reason for all of this is gold. Yeah. Obviously, it has to be sold to somebody. Mm. Otherwise, they wouldn't be engaged in this business. Mm. Have you been able to figure out a way to track where this illegally mined gold is going? Because there seems to be quite a bit of it mm. moving. Mm. And if you're able to track it mm. and find out who's buying it, who's mm. selling it, and who's buying it, mm. and who's benefiting from it, perhaps, you know, cutting the head is what will help it's very, for the whole value very, chain. Very to important. In, in the diamond uh, sector, we call it uh, the traceability, mm -hmm. and it's handled by the Kimberley process. Uh, yes, we have measures of uh, tracing and knowing mm -hmm. because it, internationally, they are also interested in where you get your gold. So you don't mine illegally and come and sell to us. Exactly. So the traceability, what we've done uh, is a technology uh, at the point where the gold is produced. Uh, we have uh, some uh, kind of arrangement where you would determine or you s seal that after producing the gold, you need to put and seal. Mm -hmm. the, the seal number is taken, is noted. Then when it gets to PMMC for assaying, you have another seal because the seal will be broken and the PMMC will also seal it. At the export point, there must be a seal. Okay. When it is exported, there will also be a seal that they will reconcile with the seal numbers that we have. Mm -hmm. And we call that process uh, traceability. It's good you've asked this question, very intelligent question. Because it's always important to, in a way, know where you get your gold from, where you get your diamond from, and that technology is being up. Another thing, once you've uh, even reminded me on the technology, mostly what you realize is when our officers get to the entrance of any concession, because their documents may not be up to date, they tend to prevent them from entering the concession. Because when you get there, you ask them, where is your permit, where is your mm -hmm. minerals commission, concern, where is your EP, and so on. Sometimes they are even you know, mishandled. They need to go there with security and so on and so forth. So what we have decided to do is to develop a QR code system where a signpost, a signpost will be digitalized. So you put it at the entrance of the concession, mm. you get there, you use your QR code determination gun, you just put it there, and it tells you the details of the concession, whether or not it has the... You have to the, 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 uh, mm. So there's no need coming in to ask you questions. So going forward, you will realize that you get to entrance of any mining company, you see the signpost there, the officers get there, and they, they, they just use it to determine whether or not. Apart from, apart from that, I was on uh, the alternative livelihood thing. And when we started, you mentioned the digging, leaving them there. So we've also adopted a system of reclamation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where we need to cover the pit that you mentioned and we vegetate it and use other system. It had to soil tests, remove the mercury, just because mercury is poisonous, remove mm -hmm. it. And if there is any cyanide, when cyanide is exposed to sun, it's in a way a degrade, you know, or it, it um, in a way goes off. So the soil becomes then clean. We plant and we vegetate it for use. So we using reclamation, using community mining concept also. The community mining is to put this teaming youth together. Government is ready to support them with mining equipment. 
And I mentioned the mercury free machines from the onset. So you want to regularize them basically? Uh, yes. And recently we've done about 10, and that has given about 51,000 dire jobs. Wow. And people are excited. You come to my constituency, you have one there, and they are excited 10 about. 10 districts? The, yes, so far, okay. mining district that we've you know, opened uh, the community mining. And we are on. And this week, for example, God willing, we may open another one. We Every month, we we anticipating to open about five. So the My Minerals Commission, EPA, they are going through the regularization system, get the documentations ready. Then we roll out to do all these things. As I, it seems, it sounds to me like you're looking for an attractive way to say, instead of taking the cane, to chase mm -hmm. the illegal people, let's create an attraction for them to rather excellent. leave what they're excellent. doing. Excellent, excellent, that, that excellent. The, the so because of that, mm -hmm. like the community, uh, community mining that I mentioned, we've launched what you call the small scale mining community, uh, community uh, manual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is uh, a manual that will guide you okay. as to what to, How to do. Operate you. Uh, for example, um, when we come to your concession, we must see a health post. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm, must mm -hmm. see kind of a washroom. We must see uh, an office, a amenities that support uh, yes, a absolutely operation. excellent. Mm -hmm. okay. and it is, shouldn't take much uh, okay. of a cost. Unfortunately, yeah. we don't have you for very long today. We know you're, you're, oh, you're yeah. going so to my, meet Bennett no, and the so team on radio. Bennett and so team are waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> I have to let you yeah. go. Interested. I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm here. Yeah, you know. Should we bring some tea? We will also enjoy it. But no, we appreciate Because I need to have more time. Maybe some other day. Yes. For for us to run through would some of the activities that, that we're back that would be good. But yeah. I'm grateful uh, for allowing me to join this oh, big fast for, show. Thank you for Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank it's you. been one of the enviable shows uh, that we, we watch it's, in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. He was really <laughs> the He's yeah. lucky. He's <laughs> always, you know, having some motivation in the morning around you. And <laughs> Honorable could you catch the Deputy Minister for Lands and Natural Resources? We appreciate your time. Thank a you pleasure, so much. And hopefully, we will have you back for a longer Absolutely. discussion. I'll, I'll be glad yeah. to be here. All right. Fantastic. Thank you.